Evening guys, welcome back to another midweek devotional. Today we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, which says, For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance. By rejecting the Son of God, they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. So looking at this verse, it's something that if you've been reading the Bible, uh, you may have come across. And it may have seemed initially like, oh, wait a minute. This, this is really challenging. Like, wait, once... I've come to the Lord, and if I sin, then there's no repentance left for me anymore. Like, I can't repent. Like, it can seem initially a little bit challenging. But when you look at it in context, it makes sense in light of what uh, the writer of Hebrews is saying here. Um, it's good to look at Scripture and for it to challenge us. That's how we want to be looking at Scripture as the truth, as the authority that we align our lives with, rather than looking at scripture and saying, how can I make this fit what I want to uh, live like? Because, you know, that's what we can sometimes try and do. And so it's easy to look at that verse and assume the worst. But, you know, like we just said, it's also sometimes a little bit easier to take take a look at it, look at what we believe, and just make this verse fit into that. But the reality is that scripture should shape what we believe, not us shaping scripture according to what we already believe. So let's look at it in context, as well as the context of scripture as a whole. So I'm not going to read the whole of scripture just to Get this, I encourage you guys to do that aside from this midweek devotional today. It'll be a very long midweek devotional otherwise. So just verse one helps to give us a little bit of a hint, and then I'm gonna kind of fill in some more gaps here. So verse one of Hebrews six says, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. So this is actually talking about the fundamentals, what repentance looks like, and what faith in God looks like. So it's pretty he pretty clear looking at all of this, stating that, hey, it's impossible to come to repentance once um, these once they've experienced these things that have been spoken about here in verses four and five. Um, that they've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and so they turn away. Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23, tells us that people can do many different things in the Lord's name, but yet still not be saved. That they'll say to the Lord on that final day, but Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name and that in your name? And the Lord's like, depart from me, I never knew you. That's the sad thing that can happen. But... The reality is they never actually had a relationship with God. They never actually put their trust in the Lord. We assume from the outside, these people would be saved. You know, they're doing all these different things for God. But the reality is that God knows their hearts because we can only judge by their fruits, by outward appearance, like we read in Samuel. Now, Demas is an interesting guy that Paul talks about. He's congratulated in Colossians, in Philemon, he's a co-laborer, he's really bigged up. And then, when it comes to writing his second letter to Timothy, Paul is basically like, hey, Demas, he loved this world and he's left me. He pretty much lays him out like that. We don't know for sure what happened to Demas, but the reality is that God knows, and even if it seems like someone may have believed at first, they may let the things of this world choke out their spiritual life, like we can see in Mark 
chapter 4, verse 16, in that parable that Jesus speaks about and that he later explains in that same chapter. Proverbs 24 tells us that a righteous man may get up again after falling multiple times. John speaks in Revelation about the church that was lukewarm and that they must return to their first love. And then Jesus tells us about the prodigal son who returned to the father. There are many elements of scripture that show sinners returning to the faith, returning to God at different points in their walk from uh, right from, hey, you're following after the Lord, you mess up and you turn right back through to completely saying, Lord, I've had enough. I want nothing to do with you. Walking off and then coming right back. You think of Judas. Judas left Jesus and then committed suicide. Peter denied Jesus three times and then he returned to Jesus. There's a big difference in what we can do after we've said, I want nothing to do with you, Lord. We can choose to walk in that or we can choose to say, I made a mistake in saying that then. <laughs> I need to turn back to God. We have a choice in our repentance. The enemy wants us to assume that we've lost our salvation and to just go his way, to just say, you know what, I've probably messed up too much. I'm going to do whatever you want and go our own way kind of thing. But that's not what the Lord wants. And that's not the reality of the situation. The Lord calls us to return to him. 1 John 1 verse 9 tells us that we can confess our sins and return to him and he will forgive us. Repentance is a work of the spirit, yes, as we read in Romans 2 verse 4, but it's also an action on our part in choosing to return to God. God doesn't force us to repent. He doesn't strong arm us. He says, hey, and really, you know, he has his part in this, but then it is also our part in us turning back to the Lord, in us walking that. Plus, the writer of Hebrews is giving these basic instructions here in this chapter. It says, look, do we need to go back to the basics here of what repentance actually means? Because in the Jewish mind, especially then culturally as well, you're looking at repentance being something other than what it actually is when you turn to Christ and simply turning from sin and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. In their mind, it would have involved much more. It would have involved sacrifices and all sorts. But that's not what the writer of Hebrews is talking about here. The idea expressed here is if you turn your back on Jesus, no amount of repentance will save you apart from turning back to God. The impossibility spoken about here is the hardness of our own hearts, not God's willingness to welcome us. So when we're looking at other people, we have to accept that we don't fully know apart from between them and God. And then for looking at our own lives, if we repent and turn to Jesus, then we're okay and we don't need to worry about it. We mustn't let the enemy tell us that we've messed up too badly for God to forgive us because that's not true, especially when we read scripture. We must remember that though all have fallen short of the glory of God, he still offers forgiveness through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And our sin has been paid for. And not just the sin that we came with when we were like, oh yes, I first believe. But that sin throughout our life has been paid for upon the cross. Paul says, so let us not sin that grace may abound. And Paul reiterates that multiple times in different letters. <laughs> Look, if you've been forgiven, yes, there can be this attitude of, oh, well then I'll just keep on sinning if it's all being paid for, so I'm good. But that's not what the Lord wants us to do. Rather, let's live lives worthy of the price that's been paid for it. The fact that God sent his only son to die for our sin so that we would actually live 
to honour him, to live as his adopted children, to live in a way that actually is then sharing and expressing, not just with our words, but with our lives, what God has done for us and what God continues to do in our lives. So God bless you guys and have a good day.